Hello and welcome to Structured Change. Today we are going to look at four main stakeholder groups that ultimately influence the conversion of objectives through to value for stakeholders. These four groups or stakeholder groups are the asset manager, the asset owner, the asset maintainer and the asset operator. Those four groups sound quite simple, but under the different constructs of your organization or a contract, the geography spread of your asset base, these four stakeholder groups will have either a positive or negative tension associated with them. Um, the tensions are often situational, market driven. Sometimes it's driven by the age of the asset. Sometimes it's driven by raw materials. It can be driven by market price. But understanding these four stakeholder groups is key to understanding and appreciating where an organization is. From a change perspective or a change journey perspective, understanding and being mindful of where each stakeholder group is within these four considerations gives you the ability to pull levers and to have conversations to bring people together. So let's take a look at this next presentation and you'll see visually how the four fit together, but also too, from a consideration point of view, how you as a change person can leverage and help organizations reach sustainable asset management excellence. Let's take a look. Okay, so let's have a look at these four main stakeholder groups. From an asset management perspective, whether I'm in supply chain, operations or maintenance, I'm interested in understanding the focus or the needs that my internal stakeholders have. Typically, this will exclude your external suppliers and external customers and is very much focused from a pure asset management context. So again, we've got an asset, the triangle here representing the asset, and what will happen is we will have demand placed on that asset um, through objectives as well, so objectives on this side. And then at the other side, we wish to return value to stakeholders. Okay, pretty straightforward. Sitting around the asset and accommodating both the demand and objectives through to the delivery of value is of course the asset management system. Pretty straightforward. Moving on, the asset then needs to consider two important areas. Now this is relevant in section 4.1 and 4.2 of ISO 55001 because we're very interested in what is the context of the organization. And there's another video on that on Structured Change TV you can visit. And of course, what are the stakeholder needs and wants? And of course, that's another video at StructuredChange.tv. But the idea here being is you need to balance out the two because the context could mean anything from am I in high tech, low tech? Am I emerging with technology? Am I at the tail end of technology? Am I a distributed network of machinery across multiple sites? Am I a single site? Am I internal, external? Am I rail? Am I aviation? Am I nautical? And of course, stakeholder needs and wants, really looking at what are their absolute bare bones needs for them to reach their goals, KPIs. But of course, I added in the word here, wants, because wants is also very important to understand that because people will have a preference even though it's more implicit than explicit need to take that in consideration let's take a look then at how we would actually take the asset and actually divide it up into the four these four main groups now if we take the top group here you've got the owner and that could be an individual a company a consortium a trust fund it could be any number of entities but they are seeking a return on investment or performance, okay? We then move to the manager. Now the manager sits between the owner and the maintainer and operator, and they're very interested in balancing out the cost, risk and performance so that the asset does deliver value, but it also mindful of the design parameters and the design life of the asset in which to do so. So very much a risk focus. We then come down then to the maintainer, and the maintainer is often seen to be a cost to an organization. Now, most people in maintenance or who understand asset management realize that maintenance is 
not just a cost, it's an investment as one of sustainability. But then of course, when you get to the operator, they're seen as being, well, the harder we can operate something, quite often the more money we can make out of something. But of course, that's where the manager comes in to actually appreciating that if you lower the cost in maintenance or you drive too hard in operations, you drive the balance of cost, risk and performance and sometimes to a level that's not sustainable for your asset or your asset management system. Coming back then to the context of the organisation and with our four stakeholder groups, I've drawn it this way because it's important to understand that the owner is really making their decisions based upon the context of the organisation, i.e. what is the market doing, raw market prices in, in terms of materials, um, all the different strategies and from that the organisational objectives are then translated into, if you like, asset management strategies or what asset would I actually buy or bring into my system to deliver value. Whereas over here we've got the manager who is really focused on understanding and listening to stakeholder needs. Now that's important because the context of the organisation for instance might be an electrical distribution unit and it needs to pump out say 10 gigawatts of power on a daily basis. But when the manager listens to a stakeholder and find out that needs to actually increase to 12 gigawatts per hour or per day, they have to make a decision based upon the balance of cost, risk and performance. And that's why these two areas of the context and also stakeholders are very important. And on the structurechange.tv we've got two videos on those topics. Now when we come back to the asset and we divide it into the four stakeholder groups, you can see here that the owner is quite a clear delineation. They are the owner or the entity that owns the actual asset in question. We've then got the manager in between, of course, and then the balance between or the tension that exists between maintainer and operator. So again, a reminder, performance focus, risk focus, and cost focus. But ultimately, all three leads to value. Now, the tension that exists here, you can see, is centered around these three areas. Now, often when things aren't going too well, you'll hear that maintenance is blamed because something broke or something failed or wasn't performing. When operations have got, for instance, it might be due to raw material inadequacies, they're often blamed because they can't keep things running at the right rate in order to produce in outcome. The challenge that exists here is right in the center here and I call it the Bermuda Triangle and the reason I call it that is it's because where boundaries are lost. Now understanding this tension here is quite important because it depends on the makeup of your organization because this might be in one entire organization. It might be a contract, it could be a number of things but understanding, one, the balance of cost, risk and performance, but also, two, the challenges and the tensions that will exist between manager, maintainer and operator is also important. So to further that comment further, if you look at here, we've got maintainer and we've got manager, you could actually have a contract in which the maintainer and the manager are both one entity. Okay, so that's quite a common model um, out there in the marketplace. Again, you might have the entire organization is all four. Now, whilst that might look like an idea in terms of economy of scales, not all organizations are skilled enough to be able to do all four. You've also got the time that you'll find that the operator and maintainer are both the one entity. And um, that's an example of that might be a railway who operate and maintain their own rolling stock where but that rolling stock actually sits on top of someone else's asset that actually owns the perway or the actual rail network. But it is important to understand that different combinations of these relationships exist contractually and through circumstance. So understanding who is who in relation to this diagram 
will help you as a change agent understand the tensions that are driving behaviours as well as the value. So from a change management perspective, by doing the assessment against these four roles, we understand the true accountability and responsibility. We also then, we also realise too that everyone is doing asset management, but there should only be one asset manager. That's a key thing because, as I said before, when things aren't going well, the maintainer will often be blamed, whereas things are going very well, the operator will take the credit. Nothing wrong with that if it's true, but you get my point. It can drive bad behaviours. The dynamics between the operator and maintainer needs to be underpinned and likely to get or strive for lead indicators, because lead indicators are futuristic, but also bring two teams together in order to achieve future value, as opposed to reflecting on past cost. That's a key one, lead indicators. Um, we've talked about that when things go well, they assume that they are the asset manager, and when things aren't going well, well, the asset manager role can be tricky. And that's just circumstantial to these four roles. So again, this was just an opportunity for you to look at your asset management system and the people within it, the stakeholders within it, and categorize them into one of those four roles. I hope this has been helpful, and please look for other videos on structurechange.tv.